Ever wondered why we don't just make the conductor inside a cable as thick as possible? I mean, thicker wire means less resistance, right? So, why not just make it super fat and forget about losses? Well, it's not that simple. If we do that, the electrical stress on the insulation increases. And that's where the cable says, I give up. So today, let's uncover the science behind how engineers decide the most economical conductor size. The one that keeps both your cable and your wallet safe. Here's the thing. In a cable, the maximum electrical stress doesn't occur in the middle, but right at the surface of the conductor. So, for the safe working of a cable, the dielectric strength of the insulation must be greater than this maximum stress. Now, the formula for maximum stress is given by G max equals 2V divided by small d multiplied by log to the base E of capital D by small d, where V is the working voltage. Capital D is the diameter of the sheath, and small d is the diameter of the conductor. Now, imagine this. For a given voltage and sheath diameter, we can still adjust the conductor diameter, small d. So the question is, what value of small d gives us the most economical design? Any guesses? Pause for a moment and think. If you make small d too large, you waste copper or aluminium. If small d is too small, the insulation stress skyrockets. So, there must be a sweet spot, right? Let's find it. We want the maximum stress Gmax to be minimum for economical design. That means we need to minimize Gmax, or in other words, maximize small d times log to the base E of capital D by small d. So, we differentiate it with respect to small d and set it to zero. A classic optimization move. Now, let's do it. D, D, D small of log to the base E of capital D by small d equals zero. Solving it step by step gives us log to the base E of capital D by small d minus one equals zero, which means log to the base E of capital D by small d equals one. And when you take the anti-log, you get capital D by small d equals E, which is approximately 2.718. There it is, the most economical condition for cable design. Your sheath diameter capital D should be 2.718 times the conductor diameter small d. Pretty cool, right? That means, for every one unit of conductor diameter, the sheath diameter should be about 2.718 times larger. Nature's favorite constant, E, even sneaks into cable design. Now let's express this condition mathematically. From the relation capital D equals E times small d, we can say that small d equals capital D divided by 2.718. And under this condition, G max equals 2V divided by capital D by 2.718, which simplifies to G max equals 2V by small d volts per meter. However, in practical cases, especially for low and medium voltage cables, the diameter calculated from this formula often turns out to be too small when we consider the current carrying capacity. A cable designed strictly according to this equation might not be able to handle the desired current safely because smaller conductors have higher current density and greater heating. That's why, in real-life applications, the conductor diameter is often increased slightly above the theoretical economical value. By doing so, the cable can carry the required current without overheating, while still keeping the stress on the insulation within safe limits. And here's the interesting part. To avoid unnecessary use of copper while still achieving a reasonable conductor size, engineers often make a few smart design choices. For example, they may switch to aluminium instead of copper because, for the same current, aluminium needs a larger cross-section, which naturally increases the conductor diameter. Or they may use copper wires that are stranded around a central non-metallic core like hemp. In some designs, a central lead core may also be used instead of hemp. So, the idea is simple. We stick to the theoretical ratio for guidance, but tweak the conductor diameter slightly to balance both electrical and economic efficiency. Let's make it practical. Example 1. Find the most economical diameter of a single core cable used on a 50 kV single phase system, where the maximum permissible dielectric stress is 40 kV per centimeter. We know Peak voltage V equals 50 multiplied by root 2, which is 70.7 kV. 
maximum stress g max equals 40 kilovolt per centimeter so the most economical conductor diameter small d equals 2v divided by g max that means small d equals 2 multiplied by 70.7 .7 divided by 40 which gives approximately 3.53 centimeters example 2 now let's take a 132 kilovolt three phase system where the dielectric stress allowed is 60 kilovolt per centimeter phase voltage of cable v equals 132 divided by root 3 that is 76.21 kilovolt peak voltage equals 76.21 multiplied by root 2 equals 107.78 kilovolt then the most economical diameter small d equals 2 multiplied by 107.78 divided by 60 which gives 3.6 centimeters and the sheath diameter capital d equals 2.718 multiplied by 3.6 that's approximately 9.78 centimeters so the cable should have a conductor diameter of 3.6 centimeter and an internal sheath diameter of 9.78 centimeter simple logical and elegant right so to sum it up the most economical design of a cable happens when the ratio of sheath diameter to conductor diameter equals 2.718. At this ratio, the insulation stress is minimum and the material usage is optimum. But remember, real-world cable design doesn't rely only on this condition. We also have to consider current carrying capacity, temperature rise and cost of materials. Still, this principle gives a theoretical benchmark that every electrical engineer should know. Now, tell me in the comments, did you already know that this mysterious number E also appears in cable design? And can you guess where else this number shows up in electrical engineering? If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to like the video, share it with your classmates, and subscribe to Electrology for more such deep dive explanations that make textbooks come alive. Also, don't forget to tap on the thanks button if you found this content helpful. It really helps support the channel. And for those who want to contribute regularly, hit the join button to become part of our growing Electrology family. See you in the next video, where we'll uncover another fascinating secret of power system engineering.